Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. Welcome to the Antiques Roadkill Show. The patient on the bench today is uh, a candlestick, obviously for a fairly large candle. It's made of wood. After the wood was turned and uh, carved, it was coated with a coat of plaster, sometimes called gesso. The brown part here is the base wood, the white part is the gesso, and that gives you a nice, smooth, easy coat to put the paint on. That's a technique that goes back a very, very long time. And even though it goes back a long time, it's a process that could be easily duplicated today, which is to say, I have no idea how old this is. It could be 200, 300 years old. Nothing to say it's not. And it could be 10 or 15 years old. At the base here, we have these carved feet, sometimes called lion's feet. They're certainly not eagle's feet or anything like that. Around here we have the reading. That's these grooves cut in here to make it look like a column. Uh, festoons, little pieces of sash hung between these two rings. Moving up, we have uh, iris or lily leaves. And up here at the again, at top, again, more lily leaves. Now if we turn it around to the back, we see that there's no carvings on the back. It's plain. Even the back foot, it's just a foot, no claws, no toes. Now the reason it's here in the lab today is fairly obvious. The neck is broken. But if we look inside the broken part, we can see the reason the neck is broken. This entire piece is riddled with holes left by powder post beetles. A little tiny insect which uh, comes along, lays its eggs on wood, the eggs hatch, a little tiny caterpillar larvae looking thing uh, hatches out, burrows its way into the wood, and that's where it lives until it decides to become a fly again, or a moth, whatever they are, and uh, crawls out and flies away to go eat someone else's uh, furniture. Now one of the curious things about this is, is that uh, as far as I know, and as far as Wikipedia knows, powder post beetles um, only lay their eggs on bare wood. And of course, if we look in here at the bottom, we can see there is bare wood up inside there, which would appear to be where they got in from, which means that all of these little holes here, all over the entire thing, every bit of it is peppered with these things where they ate their way in from the wood and then out through the gesso and out through the paint. Those are all exit wounds. If we look here at the neck, we can see an old repair where they simply glued it together. In fact, uh, the neck here shows a few traces of glue as well. So that's not going to be a satisfactory way to put this thing back together. I'd like to make this a quick and easy job. No more trouble than it needs to be. But uh, it also needs to be something strong enough that a fairly big, heavy candle can be put up here on top and not uh, break it off. Now, the solution to this problem is to drill a hole down the neck and insert a wooden dowel, which will connect the two pieces, all the while understanding that I'm drilling into compromised wood that's already broken one time before, and there's no reason it couldn't just all disappear into a cloud of dust as soon as the drill bit hits it. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Now the key to drilling any kind of delicate material is to having everything under control. Having a big drill press like that means that my drill bit is going to be under control. It's not going to move around. What I've got to do is get this thing immobilized so it can't move when the drill bit hits it.
Now it's obviously off center, and I can eyeball it and get it pretty close, but uh, there is a trick for locating it as close as uh, practically possible for this kind of work. Start off with this cap I made, got it so that it fits on the neck fairly snug, and a Sharpie, which was sacrificed for the cause. And we just rotate all this stuff together as smoothly as possible. And that draws a circle that we can get just a little bit closer to. Right about there. We have a half inch Forster bit going into fairly soft wood. So I have the Packard Precision 12 speed drill press set at 2430 RPM. still all in one piece, so I think that's a win. My biggest fear was that this whole neck was just going to crumble into dust. And as it is, it did break through right here on the side, because there was just simply no wood there. At least the Beetles had left us with no wood. That's a half inch hole with a three eighths inch dowel, which will give enough room so that this could be positioned so that it's as close to it was it was before the break. Ordinarily, for this kind of a job, I would use the slow set epoxy, thirty minute cure. But uh, for a piece like this with so many holes in it, epoxy. It's very liquid. It'll flow. And I really don't want to have a sprinkler of epoxy all the way down this thing. So the choice for packing the holes will be PC7, which is an epoxy paste. And I'll use a little bit of the slow cure epoxy just for painting the neck to make sure that I've got good adhesion up here at the top. But the main strength is going to be at the, at the bottom of the hole in each piece. This is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. 
and I thank you for sticking through this video with me. And I'd appreciate if you'd like to subscribe, as well as uh, see me again next week. Thank you very much.